common phrase you'll hear professional photographers say is you have to know the rules of photography before you're allowed to break them, but they don't often elaborate on that. So that's what I'm going to do for you today. The difference between a beginner photographer breaking the rules and a seasoned photographer breaking the rules is this. Beginners usually break rules because they don't know them, and seasoned photographers usually break rules because they are trying to say something by breaking them. Let me show you what I mean. Before I do, a quick thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. In these photos, there are several photography rules being broken, but none of them add to the story of the photo. It's simply displeasing to look at. The reason why photography rules exist in the first place is so that we can take photos that are aesthetically pleasing and that guide the viewer's eye to the most important part of the photo. Here, it just looks awkward and feels like a total disregard for 200 years of an established craft. A seasoned photographer who is great at breaking the rules is Ben Sasso. In this photo, there are again many rules being broken, but the photograph is still mesmerizing. The blur and framing add to the emotion of the photo and help to inject it with life. We aren't concerned that their feet are cut off and the focus isn't tack sharp. It's a raw and real moment filled with energy. And if you're this couple, you'll likely treasure this photo. In this way, Ben has intention behind his photography rule breaking. It adds to the story rather than bucking it completely. So it's pretty easy to see the difference between beginners and seasoned photographers, but let's talk about how you personally can learn to break the rules like a seasoned photographer with these three tips. Framing is a big one and it's used in both photography and cinematography to evoke a certain emotional response out of the viewer. The tried and true rules for framing are these. Rule of thirds, headroom, looking room, and refraining from cutting off your subjects at the joints. The rule of thirds says that you need to place your subject in one of these four places of your image. The idea is that the photo is cut up into thirds and you never put your subject in the dead center or on the edge of the image. Headroom simply means you leave enough room above your subject's head so that you don't provoke the feeling of being trapped. Looking room means your subject needs about this much room to look towards the other side of the frame so that they again don't give the impression of being trapped. Cutting off the limbs at the joints creates the feeling that the limb doesn't carry on past the edge of the frame. It can also provoke tension because our brains subconsciously fill in the rest of the limb if we can see past that joint. If the framing cuts off the joints, we subconsciously think that the rest of the limb doesn't even exist. You can buck these rules if you have a good reason to though. For example, if you want to create tension in a photo, you can frame your subject in a bottom quadrant like is often employed by the show Mr. Robot. If you want to create the feeling that your subject is trapped, you can pin their face up to the edge of the frame like these shots from Bo Burnham's Inside. If you want to create a sense of balance and perfection, you can center compose your images like Wes Anderson does here, here, and here. If you have something you want to say or a feeling you want to elicit, breaking the rules of framing can be a great tool for you to use. This is a big one. There are photographers who really care about how sharp the focus of a photo is. And it makes sense because when a photo is slightly out of focus or if the focus is on a random part of the photo instead of the subject's eyes in a portrait, it can feel lazy or unfortunate. However, you can say a lot about your image through the focus of it. An out of focus photo can elicit emotions of loss, confusion, or of being carefree. Slowing the shutter speed when you take a photo can drag the light and elicit a fun party vibe or the feeling of time passing. You can add a ton of drama and depth to your storytelling by using focus and shutter speeds in these ways. Another important rule of photography is to make sure your background is clean. It's important that random objects aren't intersecting with your subject's head at any point. However, sometimes you can use background elements to tell an entire story in an image. For example, when I stood in front of the London Eye here, it reminded Rachel of those Renaissance paintings where everyone had halos for like a thousand years. It also adds subframing to the composition and additional context to the photo. Here are some other times that we've seen this incorporated in a really cool way. By adding or paying attention to these small details, you can create meaningful images that say something instead of just the same old thing everyone and their moms are posting on Instagram. And if you wanna know about a great place to post your awesome rule-breaking photos, Okay, ready? Now. Squarespace! All right, my first time making a website. I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited. Let's do this. I'm already done making my website. Are you surprised? I am. I'm really impressed with Squarespace's blogging tools. Yay. Whoa, they've got email campaigns? I'm totally gonna send one. 
That was totally worth it. Look at all this traffic overview. It's all right here. A year ago, I didn't think I could have my own beautiful website, but Squarespace made it so easy. Thank you. This year, give yourself the gift of your own beautiful website with Squarespace. Save 10% when you use the code Mango Street at checkout. Head to the link in our description to get started. If you want to learn more about photography rules so that you can learn how and why you might want to break them, I'll link to some other videos we have on the subject. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. Bye.